Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Merry Christmas, everybody. You can see I got our Christmas tree set up for the stream right behind us. And today we're going to be going over Christmas Ramada, everything you need to know about her as a unit, and whether or not you should be pulling for her. All right, everybody. Well, there is a lot to know. So let's go ahead and go over it here. So Christmas Ramada is a water element unit. She is limited time, and a lot of people actually refer to Ramada as like the water stern, right? Now, because Christmas Ramada and JP came out early, like significantly early in the lifeline of the game, they also gave her some exclusive buffs for global as well to make her a little bit more relevant. Her primary weapon is going to be Greatsword. She can equip arm it, arm it, armor, helmet, and accessories. Uh, her TMR is a helmet that gives defense 7, critical avoid 7, but it also gives 542 HP, which is pretty beefy. And I actually do like her TMR skill. It's a 40% attack buff and a move 1 for 3 turns. I think that's actually really powerful, right? Because if you consider soldier units, probably their biggest drawback is that they're beat up pretty easily. And the fact that, you know, a lot of their attacks are closer range. So being able to get within range of the opponent, let's say you set Shikuchi because she has sub ninja, you pop on this TMR skill. Not only is it going to give her move one, but it's going to give her attack 40%. Pretty powerful. Uh, her critical hit rate is going to be 10 plus 10 with an attack plus 10% for her mastery ability. And then her secondary mastery ability is going to give water unit allies max HP plus 10%, water attack plus 15, critical hit rate plus 10, and attack plus 20% for herself. So just to, uh, you know, keep track for you guys. So she has 20% critical hit rate on her base stats. She also gets an additional plus 20 critical hit rate from her ability board. So just at, on her own, she's at 40% critical hit rate, which is pretty powerful. Now, I didn't or I couldn't really find the stats for Christmas Ramada uh, in terms of the tier uh, stat related buffs that I usually show you guys, just because her EX stats are already out in Ultima and they already changed her rank ranking. She's going to have reasonably high agility, luck, and attack, though. Uh, her limit break decreases slash resistance 38% for three turns to target is 210% damage and has some significant range on it honestly though i think you want to turn this thing off because it takes 63 ap to use which is bonkers even if you have ziza spells i don't even know if she's gonna use this shit like it's crazy how much ap it takes for her like i'm gonna go out on a limb and say that might be the highest cost limit break in the game for a non-mage unit. Uh, she does get 10% slash resistance, 20% uh, blunt resistance, and she is weak 10% to pierce and 20% to magic, 20% uh, fire resistance and 10% weakness to lightning. Uh, she kind of suffers from the same thing that all water units suffer from, which is the prevalence of Frederica and uh, Sid. I mean, honest to God, Sid will just probably one shot her. Like I have no hope in her surviving an encounter with Sid. Uh, <laughs> she might be pretty good though against uh, Luartha or maybe even Christmas Mashery herself. Maybe, I could potentially see it coming. Let's talk about her passives. Uh, being a soldier main job, she's of course gonna get access to the 60% attack buff. You're almost always gonna be setting that in addition to uh, Shikuchi from Ninja, move one, jump one. And you also get the uh, agility 12%, luck 12% for self from Sub Ninja as well. You're probably going to be using some combination of all three of those. Unless you're going for some type of a Drain Force build in which you'll probably be setting HP up one. In terms of counters, you're going to be using Counter Slash, I think. Just because it's a Slash modified counter and she doesn't really have anything else that's going to be really prevalent. Poison Needle, throw it out the window. We're not interested. This counter, not really either. Uh, in terms of her main job kit, she's going to have access to Hazard Form, which is an attack 50% for three turns to self. Now, if you are running her TMR on her, you might actually want to turn this off just so that she uses her TMR buff, which is going to be attack plus 40% and that move plus one. So it's 
almost identical to hazard form except for it doesn't sacrifice the hp 10 percent i would turn off asper force drain force you're gonna just leave on uh hazard break definitely probably her most powerful ability and the ability that's really going to make her viable and grim reaper again she's probably rarely going to use it i would leave it off if you do run her sub job soldier she gets access to hazard spin paralyze edge and hard slash Important note here with Paralyzed Edge is it's one of the few attacks that Soldier has, which has a high range height with it. So if you're going on a map where you're maybe attacking an enemy from a range or going up hills, you may want to set Sub Soldier for her. Her other sob job is going to be Ninja and Monk. I could see Sub Ninja being pretty viable for a couple reasons, and I think it's going to be her main sub job. Primarily... I see it being viable for the self buffs and for its chaining purposes. Shuriken can also hit an opponent that is outside of range. Like let's say that she's not in range of an attack since you have to be pretty close in range. I can see Shuriken hitting an opponent as just kind of like a low AP deal damage attack. She has Decider of Fate, which is accuracy 60 and guaranteed critical hit rate for self for one turn. And then she also has Dream Within a Dream, which is that ninja three hit slash chain with critical chance 20%. If you're keeping track, that's going to be a 60% critical hit rate chance for this to proc, uh, which is pretty high, right? Uh, that's going to put her critical hit rate pretty high up there. In terms of Monk Sub... Uh, we do have Accumulate or Store. That's really going to be the only thing you're going to use if you do sub her Monk. going to pop that Store, and then you're going to go in and you're going to try and one-shot something. Now, which jo sub job do I think is best? You're probably going to be going Ninja with her, I imagine. And if you're ever going to be doing some type of raid content, uh, if we ever get like Ifrit again or some type of Fire Element, and we do know that Ifrit will be making a comeback in the future... Uh, Dream Within a Dream on her is going to be really powerful, right? It's going to be the way to go. And I could see her being like Water Slash Chain Comps being really powerful in potentially some type of raid content. Or if you're trying to solo raid, right? You could pair this with Glacella and then they could do Triple Triple. And uh, the dream within a dream is going to be powerful, right? Because it's coming from a soldier. It's not coming from Keton. It's not coming from Shadow Links. This is like a primary attack driven job. Uh, we're going to see some strong numbers with this. And so I think Christmas Ramada's main purpose potentially for the future is most likely going to be in water chain groups for raiding. Now, what type of equipment is she going to get? Well... Essentially, all of this is viable. Probably the most important piece of gear, though. I would say the Tide Ring is critical. I would say Golden Blade is critical, and there is an event for Golden Blade coming out this week. So if you are wanting to push for Christmas Ramada, Golden Blade is the way to go. I would probably put some form of armor on her. Uh, if you do have to use the TMR, though, uh, probably Ziza's Bells or Aldoa's Apron. And some combination of maybe defense or slash resistance. Just whatever is going to make her survive in whatever meta that we're facing right now. Now, I do want to talk about this because I want to talk about units that pair with her before we jump into VC cards and stuff. Because we got I got this question a lot down below in the comments section because I didn't know. So I confirmed that units with mastery abilities that are similar do stack but they do not stack if it's an identical unit. So her mastery ability will stack with other water element units in the future that have a water buffing mastery ability. So that's going to be uh, very similar to right here, Kraith, who comes out, who's an MR unit in the future. She has a party-wide water buffing attack and magic ability, or sorry, attack and uh, water attack ability. So she's going to be really powerful uh, paired with Christmas Ramada in the future. And I think Titus as well is going to be really powerful as well. And I think right now, Ildira with the UR card that's coming out uh, is going to be very good as well. So I would keep an eye on these units for the future. And I think, of course, Glacella, if she ever gets a second mastery ability or a second buff, is going to be very viable. I did put Tyrell and Miranda on here. I just put all the water units that I think 
are pretty much relevant or in the game just because Tyrell is going to have the ability to slash and water chain and Miranda as well if you do sub paladin will have access to slash and water chain so if you are doing maybe a future trials of reckoning the two of them could actually be very viable with her now VC cards are really I mean broad spectrum all over the place Pretty much any VC card you put on her is going to work. I actually, I should not have put the Horn card on here. That is actually a mistake. But, I mean, Ifrit, Fenrir, Iron Giant, Odin, literally anything, uh, probably Miraga or Siren are going to be the two best. And again, we don't know what the global exclusive card buff is for Christmas Ramada yet. And we do know it does give attack and agility up, and it gives party-wide unit attack resistance i believe or is that the ildira card nope it gives party wide accuracy i believe it's whatever it is it gives her specifically and it gives christmas ramada agility up and attack up that's going to be probably the best in slot card for her and it's going to be one of the few cards that can add agility it's just going to really bring her out more in terms of espers we have odin anything with slash attack up red chocobo is my personal favorite i know a lot of people like two-headed dragon but if you have pulled red chocobo i do love red chocobo uh fenrir siren uh even a Gion would potentially be viable really any type of esper that either adds slash attack or is a little bit more defensive to make her survive more something with high agility is probably going to be best for her anyway everyone i hope you guys all have a great rest of your week merry christmas to all of you uh please remember if you are going to be buying vizior for these uh make sure you use my affiliate link dig.gs slash coins or you go to dig.gs slash offer and we will be having a christmas polling stream uh tomorrow uh that's tuesday at uh 9 p.m pst to 12 a.m pst uh, we will be riding right up onto the maintenance we'll be playing another game uh while that's going on and then uh, we'll jump in and we'll do some uh, Christmas mashery and Christmas Ramadan pulls. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, have a great rest of your day.